Hello YouTube and welcome to the next episode of my KSP series. In this one, uh, as you can see, I've already started building a plane. Um, and actually, I'm going to go and take this up to dock with the space station, which I did add another part to in between, but that was kind of boring. I don't want to bring you boring stuff. Whereas this was actually kind of interesting. Uh, SSTOs are always fun, I guess. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing. So this was done on stream, so you may see a couple of like windows popping up and things. That's just windows being windows. And uh, yeah, you know, it was on stream, so there's not much I can do about it, it's in the footage. And uh, I will affix that, because, yeah, stuff. Anyway, so, we're going to build an SSTO, and I took the Aeris 4A, I think it's called, for inspiration, and that is basically the stock SSTO. So I kind of thought, let's build something with the same basic configuration as that, but maybe build it a little bit different. And uh, you'll see here, to start off with, I toyed with the idea of putting... Um, these kind of weird wings on, which I tried before, and uh, although they look really badass, they do put the center of lift too far forward, so it becomes very, very difficult to fly the plane. Um, it, well, it just doesn't fly properly, it sort of does backflips and things, which is cool, but it doesn't really work for a plane. So yeah, I tried that out just to see where the center of lift would be, um, but then decided against it, obviously because it's not really that good an idea. So in the end, I just went with the Delta wings, but you'll see here, this was the flight test. I just wanted to prove to the Twitch chat that uh, this wouldn't work. Uh, so just so you can see, this is all at four times speed, by the way. Uh, so, you know, I didn't do anything there, but it just flips backwards. It's too difficult to control. Anyway, I also thought what kind of, um, you know, for the people who actually really do, you know, because there are some people who obviously like like watching my videos. Um, for those people, what kind of videos do you prefer I do? Like, um, yeah, and here's some of the initial testing. Wow, that was loud. Uh, you may not have even heard that, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. What kind of videos do you prefer? Do you like these kind of raw commentaries, like a standard sort of gameplay commentary? Where I'm maybe talking a bit about what's going on, talking about, about other stuff, and maybe teaching you some stuff in the process, or do you prefer like the kind of more edited stuff, or do you prefer live commentaries, what what do you like? I don't know. Live commentaries are more difficult because then I have to, oh they're not more difficult, but they're not quite as easy, <laughs> so I don't know how to say it really. They're like more frustrating to do. Because first of all, I have to set it up, set everything in my room up so that you can't hear my keyboard too loudly because if I type now, you would be able to hear it quite loudly. And second of all, it means I can't really live stream it and there's one of the windows popping up. Um, but yeah, it means it more, it's more difficult to live stream for me. And uh, yeah, this one didn't go so well. I don't know why it wouldn't pull up, but it wouldn't. So pff, I just moved the wings about a bit and tried again, basically. Um, but you can see we've got RCS and everything on there now. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll fly a bit better this time. So, yeah, what, what kind of videos would you guys prefer me to do? Like, these kind of commentaries here where I've just got the sort of raw gameplay and I'm talking over it about whatever it is that's happening and whatever else. And you can see this thing doesn't really like flying too much. But I think in the end this might even be the launch that I get it to work. I just had to keep it stable on the runway and then once I got off the end of the runway I could pull up. There we go. So... Yeah, what, what do you prefer? Um, live commentaries, as I said, were more difficult, but they're more difficult because I can't live stream them, because then I'd have to speak and not speak to the Twitch chat, because it wouldn't make sense. And I like interacting with you guys when you're in the Twitch chat, because the guys that turn up are usually, you know, kind of nice to talk to. Um, so yeah, and I like live streaming. Live streaming is actually really fun. Um, if you ever get a chance, just, you know, just go and follow my Twitch channel, because I'm not going to put up YouTube videos every time I'm going to live stream because it's just a bit of a pain, um, but I'll do it some other time. So, yeah, follow me on Twitch. I think it's twitch.tv slash Rureglathon, so the weird long name that I used to use on YouTube as well. I think I've got that linked on my YouTube page, though. So, yeah, go ahead over there and follow. That'll give you an email notification. Um, and if you follow me on Twitter as well, that'll give you a Twitter notification whenever I either put up a video or start a live stream, and whether that's on Twitch or YouTube, I think, as well. Although I'm, I don't think I'm going to live stream on YouTube anymore. I tried it and it just, yeah, not as good as Twitch. So, 
here we are. We're doing that thing where you try and get up as high as you can and keep and get as much horizontal velocity as you can with the uh, jet engines because they're much more efficient than the rocket engines. And then we get to about 30 kilometers actually, which is pretty impressive for an SSTO. If you can get that high, then you're probably doing something right anyway. And um, we get that high up and then just start using the rocket engine because there's very little drag that high up anyway. Um, and we're going to try and get the encounter with the uh, with the space station. I'll explain how we do this. So we get up to an apoapsis that's roughly in line with the orbit of the space station and then we burn. And we burn so that we end up on an orbit which uh, you'll see in a second, which is bigger than because the space station, we, well, we need to, to let the space station catch up with us. And then we actually make our orbit so big that the next time we go past that point where our apoapsis was when we first made the orbit, um, the next time we go past that point, the intersection is so close that we actually get like a, um, uh, we time it basically perfectly because we slow ourselves down enough on this big long orbit to let it catch up with us. That's the easiest way of explaining it. Um, and that's like a really good, but maybe not so efficient way to, uh, to make a rendezvous. So it's something you should try definitely. Um, if you've got the fuel, it's, you know, worth it. Um, we still have plenty of fuel, so I'm not worrying too much about it. And now all we did was wait till we get to that sort of uh, close approach, I guess, and uh, burn target retrograde. So we're going at the same speed, pretty much, as the station. And that will bring us close enough that we can dock. And you can see I'm using one of those inline docking ports, which isn't so easy. But uh, to make it a bit easier, I pointed the inline docking port north, and I'm actually controlling from that on the space plane. And I pointed the docking port on the space station south, so that they're always going to be directly opposite each other. So we don't need to worry about rotation, just direction. On that doesn't even make any sense. We don't need to worry about rotation. We just need to worry about uh, movement, like translation. That's the word. So. Uh, you can see it wobbled about a bit, and then uh, we just decide, or I decide, to sw switch over the Kerbals. Uh, so we leave this guy floating here for a few seconds, so that uh, we can get, I think it was Bob actually, I'm not completely sure, back into the space plane. We'll see in a second though who it was. And then transfer over all the monopropellant, pretty much, that's in the space plane, because we don't need it really. Uh, just need a tiny bit to get us away from that docking port there, and then we're good to go. And I decided to try and land at the space center. I've not done it in a while though, so it doesn't go completely to plan, but it works fairly well in the end. I'll give you that much information. So, I uh, just pointed myself retrograde. I also turned those solar panels on, which I'd put on ages ago, just to try and make sure that, um, basically, that we sort of have a bit more power to make sure we have power when we're coming down because we were getting low, or we'd pretty much run out, actually. And then it's just time to point forwards and hope that we've judged it right, because that's all you can do at this stage. But, uh, yeah, getting down to the kind of uh, kind of altitudes now, where you really start to eat up, and you really start to get a lot of drag. And I'm just trying to, as you can see here, I'm pointing the nose down as much as I can to try and get myself to go deeper into the atmosphere where it's going to slow me down more, because I know otherwise I'm going to overshoot. And I do still overshoot a little bit, but uh, this plane actually flies reasonably well. It looks a bit wobbly because the atmosphere is thin, but once we get down here, it's actually really, really solid to fly. And, uh, you know, you can see it's fairly easy to come backwards onto the landing strip and touch down safely. So anyway, guys, I hope you liked the video, and uh, that was the end of that mission. But as always, thanks for watching, and have a nice day.